Well, initially I discovered them as a song cycle for piano and voice, uh, which my wife, Anu Komsi, sang. And uh, then I subsequently learned that there is an orchestration by Szymanowski of three of the movements. And, and of course, I wondered why he didn't complete all six, because they seem to kind of almost call call to be orchestrated. You know, they, they, the, the texture is it's so rich and so so imaginative and and somehow also finally um sort of uh, unpianistic in a way and also knowing shemanovsky's uh, other wonderful cycle for voice and ensemble shlopiemnie which is uh, um, a slightly earlier piece uh, and which i've done quite a lot a lot of times i thought well why not embark on this trip and try and emulate Szymanowski's style by, by orchestrating the rest of the three princess songs. It is, absolutely. I, I sort of immersed myself first in the existing orchestrations of the three princess songs. And of course, I made the decision to use the same orchestration, like the same forces that I used in the, in the original ones. Um, and also I went through quite a few other uh, Shinomsky pieces, including some bits of the operas, uh, just to try and, you know, find, find the ways he was thinking orchestrally. And actually what I found was quite interesting, that there is no standard Shimanovsky way of orchestrating, as there is a standard Ravel way, or a standard Debussy way, or a standard Richard Strauss way even. In many ways, uh, you can always recognize orchestration by Ravel, even if you don't know the piece and you see the score, just by the way he l lays out the chords and, and, and makes things happen. But, but in Szymanowski, there are really so many different solutions for different situations. And I think that's what made it a very difficult task, but also a very, very intriguing task. Well, once, once I then started writing things down on, on music paper, uh, I felt I had a kind of intuitive approach to it already. So actually the work itself went quite quickly. And, and I didn't sort of try out many different scenarios. I was quite sure that, you know, this should be a violin solo, this should be an oboe, this should be two trumpets, etc. It felt kind of almost as, as if there would be no other option. The texts are clearly related to each other. Uh, there is always this uh, light and airy, yet quite tragic princess figure that tells about her life and her experiences. It's very much music for a woman, woman to sing, uh, obviously. And, and uh, I think what, what, what makes it really touching is that, you know, if the performer really kind of feels that she's singing out of her own uh, experience, because we all have those experiences, don't we? And, and um, in that sense, I think Szymanowski beautifully shows, also in his music, his understanding of, of the female psyche, if I may say so, because um, he assimilates so beautifully to these, uh, to these feelings. Maybe not so much in these songs. I mean, I hear more of the Eastern European in these songs. And there are, of course, other songs, cycles like the love songs of Hafiz, which are very much impregnated by this uh, sort of the Middle East and, and uh, his, his travels there. That's interesting because in the, the songs that Szymanowski himself orchestrated, um, there's a feeling that he, he doesn't want to sort of picture the text and the voice one-to-one -one in the orchestra. He rather wants to add almost like a dialogue partner uh, to the singer. And uh, I also try to follow the same route in my, my own orchestrations so that 
that um, the events in the text or the events in the voice, the vocal events, are not directly projected in the orchestra. But rather the orchestra adds another layer of, of, of material, uh, which I think makes the overall shape and sound uh, richer. Szymanowski was an entirely unique voice in his time and I think the fact that he's not as well known, uh, known as a songwriter as some of the other contemporary people uh, like Mahler, as you said, uh, Bamberg, Schoenberg, uh, Strauss, etc., is due to the fact that his, his um, production, Szymanowski's sort of complete oeuvre, has a kind of um, slightly sporadic character. Uh, he doesn't build big cycles of, of pieces that seem to belong together. Um, all his symphonies are in very different modes, and one of them is a piano concerto, and one of them is a choral symphony, and and the others are works, works of youth and so on. So it's kind of very hard to put him into a into a clear context. And yet, every time you hear Szymanowski's music, you think. This is a completely unique voice, um, very much sort of looking for, I would say, a direct expression, a sort of um, non-romantic but very, very sensitive expression. And, and that's what I really like enormously about his music, is his sense of color and drama and and uh, he, the influence of his music uh, which is kind of goes straight to the heart <laughs> 